everybody. Welcome to Tokyo Station. Uh, the news broke just this morning. We kind of knew that this was going to happen anyways, that the, the sales of Suica and Pasmo cards, which I have right here, have been suspended indefinitely, which means that they have no idea when these will be back for sale, the physical cards themselves, which is weird a little bit, but not so much if you kind of understand the situation that's happening around the world. Um, I'll, I'm gonna tell you what you can do about this and also what exactly is the problem in this live stream. And we have live stream commenters right here. Those of you who have any questions, please don't hesitate to leave a comment in this video as well if you're doing, watching in the playback here. So we all know we all know what IC cards are right here. These are, these are what they are. Hold on a second. These are what they are, the Suica and the Pasmo. What exactly are the differences between these two? Now, Suica cards are issued by JR East, Japan Rail East, and, uh, and Pasmo is issued by Metro, the subway stations here. So there's basically nothing different between these. Other, You look on the back, they're pretty much the same. They have the same um, technology inside of these. They're just different regions, so you can use these nationally as well. Um, I guess some of the money might go to that particular transport, like JR East, for example. And inside this card is an IC chip, and this is the issue. I know, right? This blew my mind, like, really? There's an IC chip in there? Yes, there is, check it out. So you can see in this Japanese ex explanation, there's the, the flat part of the, the front of the card. Then inside of it is an IC chip, which you see that gray box on the left side. Then around it is an antenna. And then on the bottom is another plate or sheet. And that IC chip and the antenna conduct with the reader on the uh, turnstiles. And that's how you are able to um, keep, in, keep track of the money that's on here. And because it's an indep independent unit, you, you it's really harder to tamper with. At least that's the theory behind it. And um, just to go a little bit further, there are different kinds of IC chips. There's the one that you see on the credit cards. This IC chip, you see the gold thing here. These are on the outside. One of the disadvantages of that is it can get, get damaged. And the one on the inside, on the right side of this graph here is the IC chip inside the IC cards that we have here. Um, for NFC and those are typically on the inside and you can see these this same technology is in most of the passports it's inside of the driver's licenses it's inside of the school cards as well as the cards to buy tobacco from the uh, tobacco vending machines and all this has specialized data that has been registered um, by the user and there are actually uh, USB readers that you can buy for your computer that might be able to customize it within the software that they have. So uh, that's just a rundown of these. There's also a bunch of different companies that offer it. Now, I actually went to the vending machine inside there to, to see if I can get a brand new Passmo card. And you can change it to English. And you can see new, new pass, renewal of card, renewal, other speakers. So, I went to other services and couldn't find it there. Then I went to the new pass. And I'm like, no, you can't actually get a new Suica pass. I, I ran through the menu and it was frustrating. I couldn't get one because they're not offered anymore on the JR machines for Suica. Kind of disappointing. I don't know what's going on. So, uh, what this means is that you can bring your Suica card that you have purchased from before back to Japan. I believe it's about five years. Hold on a second, I might even say on the back of this card. Um, this card is, you can have up to 20,000 yen, which is about $150 on, on the card. And it says it's good for 10 years, so. so I don't think I should show you the number that's on there. Hold on a second, I can't do this. Without. Look at the tour group going by. How do I do this without showing the number? I, I know that, it, all right, on here, it, it tells you some of the information and it has 10 years on the back of it. So that means that if you have an IC card already, please bring it back to Japan. One of the reasons they have the shortages is because tourists are taking them back home and there's just not enough, there's not enough IC cards for the uh, tourists. So tourists have, 
have uh, drained the uh, <laughs> all the IC cards. All right, these are the ones that are most common for Tokyo. I actually use a Kitaka card, which is from Sapporo. If you're at Narita Airport and you're a tourist, you can get a welcome Suica card. This also has a microchip inside of it. Um, and this one is also, this expires within 28 days from the first use. So I haven't used it yet, so I can still use this until um, 125. Here's the back. A lot of tourists do get this, and this is one that I would recommend that you, you do take home. Uh, it says that this can be used within 28 days. Card cannot be reissued once lost. Um, and you can use this as IC card. So this is can be used normally anywhere else. I got it for a campaign I did with JR about three years ago, and it's still good. Then there's this, the Ikoka card. This card is from Osaka. But I think Ikoka card, is the region is actually larger than that of, of East Japan. I, I know that this goes all the way down to the Sea of Japan in Totori, they're using the Ikoka card. So this, if you get this in Osaka, they still might have this available. If you can, go ahead and get it. Why not pick it up? I travel so much, I have one card from every region in Japan, believe it or not. And my favorite is the Kitaka from Sapporo, and my second is the Sugoka card from Kagoshima, Southern Kyushu. Southern Kyushu. Whoa. And that is a pretty, cool, pretty cool. The Manaka card is from the Nagoya or JR Central. So you, you have all these different kinds of cards. It is confusing, but after you, you've lived here for a while, not anymore, not anymore. I do have the, Saya writes in here, the Kumamon card. Why yes, Saya. I happen to have a Kumamon card. The problem is, it's only good in Kumamoto. It's not good. And this one is good up to 30,000 yen. Wait, what? Wait, what? Check it out. So I don't think you can actually read this, but it says it's good up to 30,000 yen. But it's... Uh, and up to 10 years, so I better use this soon because there's about 3,000 yen on this that I haven't used. Time to go to Kumamoto, just just to search for Kumamoto maybe. <laughs> it's really busy. By the way, WRX Turbo is in the house. It's pretty busy here inside of Tokyo Station. Um, like really busy. This gives you kind of an idea panning around here. Yeah. If you are going to the regional areas of Japan, I would highly recommend that you get try to pick up a card there. But you don't have to actually get a card at all. Let me let me go outside for a second. If you have a smartphone like like this one for example, you have to be running iOS 13 or higher or or possibly um, uh, an Android. Apparently the Suica runs on iOS and Android or Google Pay runs for the Pasmo. So it doesn't really matter, again. You could get the, the Ikoka too if you wanted to from Osaka. It, again, it, it's all on the same network, but you can download the app for Suica here and then you'll be able to use it just by touching your smartphone. And it's actually, I don't, I don't actually use this, the smartphone service, but if you were to, to do this, it's actually easier to charge it. You just need your credit card number and you put the money on it that you want to use. And it might be easier to refund the money because I, I don't use it, I'm not sure. But this is what the app looks like here. I better use the lens. There you go. So that's what the app looks like. Uh, just download it, boom, you register it. I, I don't know if you actually need to have a Suica card, but I don't, I would think not, right? Ex especially considering uh, all the problems that they're having. But that's the fix. So if you have a newer smartphone, you have that NFC technology inside of there. Because you have that NFC technology inside of there, you, you will be able to go to convenience stores, vending machines, transportations, just touch your smartphone. Or not even actually touch it, you just get close because there is an antenna inside of that smartphone, right? There's that antenna allows it to um, transmit the money without actually touching it. 
I'm not sure. I, all the power is coming from the receiver, not from the actual card. So the receiver will suck that. Now, I don't think you could... I, I heard, remember, back in the day, there were like these octopus cards from Hong Kong or something, and people were able to walk down the street and siphon money off of people's wallets. I don't think you can do that anymore. At least I haven't heard of stories like that, but that's the technology behind it. We're all kind of familiar with that now, these days. Um, I want to say Michael Sassano, thank you, aloha. I was just thinking about this the other day after coming across my Suica card in my wallet. You have one. You could probably like sell that for three times the price. They've become a, a rare commodity. Now the official, I put a link in the description to the Japanese from Pasmo. You can copy and paste that link into Google Translate and you can read the official word from Pasmo this morning. So there you go. When will it come back? I don't know. I'm, I'm going to guess 2024 or maybe by the end of the year, but I do not see it changing in the next several months. This is an issue that they've had since the beginning of this year. There's so many tourists coming into Japan, they just don't have enough. So there are actually some places at the airport selling the welcome Suica passes to tourists still. So this is actually, this welcome Suica pass is still available at Narita Airport and at Haneda at one of the places still. So you, sh you can ask about this, but there's, they're uh, sold by the um, train companies and from there you can get it. I think it was a Pasmo or a welcome, welcome. They have these special cards for tourists. So I mean, it's, it's worth asking about it because having the physical card is very useful to have. Now having it on your smartphone is better because you don't lose it and it's you know tr traceable. It's on your phone, which is you know good. But uh, what's going on? My Pasma card that people in Sendai laughed at me for having is going away. No, Chris, you can no longer buy Pasmo or Suica because there's no more ice. There's an IC chip shortage. So even the Yakoka card. So you're not you, you cannot buy new ones. But if you have an existing one, according to the press release, you can still use it. Hold on. You can see there's the welcome card. They're showing the IC card on the monitor in the distance there. You see that? How to use it. That's so funny because we're actually talking about it right now. So wait a second. I guess you can buy the welcome IC card here at the Japan Rail Cafe. There you go. If they're still running that ad, that probably means that they're still selling it there. Now, these ladies here, this is the, the uh, modern Uchi, the sorry, the uh, Yaisu side of Tokyo Station and the Japan Rail Cafe. There's a information booth inside of there where you can, uh, in English, get all the information that you need about your trip. They're really good. In fact, when I go and buy um, JR East passes, I will go just talk to them and they know me, so they always ask me how I'm doing, how's my son Leo, how are, uh, how's everything going? That's nice, I like that. It's the same ladies that have been there for the last two, three years, which means it must be a pretty cool job. Uh, but I get my JR East passes. These are regional passes that you don't, you need to have a passport, but you don't need to be a tourist to get them. Like an international tourist, you can be a resident of Japan. Those are 20,000 yen for five days of unlimited travel, meaning you can take the Shinkansen up to Aomori and back, and that is 34, hold on a second. That's 28,000 yen, so you already paid for the pass with one trip up and, and one, half the way down. So in one day, if you did a day trip to Aomori, which is kind of crazy in itself, you would have paid for the pass with four days of unlimited travel. So the regional passes can make a huge difference. Craig Kawaguchi, you're very welcome, thank you. I'm gonna get some stuff from for Leo and Kanai from here. Yesterday, I got a couple of super chats. I'm gonna say thank you. I did buy a coconut, and I, I husked it, and I opened it up. You know, you can take the the heel of the knife and you open up the coconut after you've dehusked it, husked it. And uh, Leo loves to drink the water of it. And and uh, when he saw it, he goes, "Dad, that coconut!" He got his eyes lit up. So I'm gonna say thank all, thank you to all of you for for the super chats to, to give us little treats for the family. That's always really nice. Um, any questions now before we call this? Because I think that this is really inf vital information for a lot of you that are traveling here. 
um, because the, you depend on the IC cards in order to get around. Apps are pretty much replacing everything though, so you don't need to do it as much. Can you create a Suica card on the wallet app on your iPhone? Yes, you can. You can do it from an app, you can do it from your wallet app, you can do it from a, a lot of different points. Um, so you don't actually need the physical card, but it's nice to have it. And I kind of prefer to have the card. I prefer to have these cards because I'm a, I'm a collector. So I'm one of the hoarders maybe, but I mean that this is from like four or five years ago. How is it like living in Japan? Yeah, let's stick to the topic of the IC cards and traveling in Japan. Maybe I'll do another one on the life. Life is good. There's your answer. So my 25th year here. Is Kyoto in a different region so I could get a different card? Kyoto is Ikoka, which is in the Kansai region. And I believe that they're all also gone. The reason why Suica is gone first is simply because more tourists come in through Narita and Haneda than they do through uh, uh, Kansai Airport. And they were gone earliest from this region. And I, I asked Kevin, and he's actually giving a tour right now. So it's a shame I couldn't get a comment from him. But the Ikoko cards seem to be, this is the one from Kyoto. These seem to be also very limited or not available anymore. I literally, I was just at the uh, machine trying to get a new card, you just you, you can't do it. They're, they're not available. Could you print the sweep of face? I think if, maybe if you return your card, they start to recycle these and maybe they'll have limited runs back. But I have a feeling that it's easier just to say the news there, there are none and release them when they have the supply again. Nothing. So, yeah, they're not available. Go to Kyoto and Osaka and prove it, please. I don't have to. I asked Kevin, he lives there. I can make a phone call. Don't try to get, you know, if you want me to go to Kyoto, you better super chat me like 30,000 yen and maybe I'll jump on a train and go there for you. How about them? How about that? <laughs> don't, don't do that though. I, I don't have time today. Gotta edit. What about pricing? What do you mean? Pricing of what? Ticket prices went up slightly before the JR Rail Pass is the entire country. JR Central is holding it hostage in a way and uh, they don't want more people on the on the golden route and i don't blame them so just buy the regional passes if you want a discount to go to kyoto and osaka if i'm a if i'm jr central i wouldn't give you a discount either it's too crowded there's too many people even on the hikari so i think you don't save that much anyway and if you want to go to kyoto and osaka pay full price or go to the ticket booth over here you could save, you see that orange right there? That's a holdout building that wasn't torn down yet. That's a discount ticket place right across the street from Tokyo Station. If you go there, you can get about, what is it? Uh, $10 off the price of a ticket to Kyoto. And if you're buying five of them, that's 50 bucks. If you're going round trip, that's 100. So you could save a significant amount if you've got a family, for example. Um, you know, but if I'm JR Central, I'm going to be honest. Not that I, I, I don't like tourists. Let's think of it from a business point of view. People are still going to go from Tokyo to Kyoto. They don't need to sell the pass. So I can understand why they want to raise the price. If you want a regional pass to go to the countryside, it works out way better. If you get that JR East pass, it's 20,000 yen for five days of unlimited travel. That's a bargain. That's a steal when you look at the prices and the amount that you'll save by traveling around to Sendai and back. That's like, what is that? 20,000. You pay a day trip to Sendai pays for the pass. You know what I mean? So I personally, I'm, I, I think that the price raise was too high, but they did future proofed it and they don't want to raise the price anymore. So they, they're smart. They got it out of the way. People are still going to buy that pass. And JR Central is, is the reason why. Too, it's actually your fault. <laughs> it's true. Because you all want to go to Kyoto and Osaka and take the Shinkansen from Tokyo, we no longer have a cheap way to do it because not enough of you went to the countryside. 
y'all wanted to go to the same places. So the route is too crowded. If you go to the Shinkansen platform, even the Juseki on uh, Nozomi, because people are buying Nozomi tickets, full. It's crazy right now, summer. Um, comment here, Suica cannot be installed with only the NFC function used in foreign countries. I don't, I don't understand, but that might mean something to somebody. Are people flying more domestically now? Um, they do have flights for international tourists at discounts, especially Anna and Jal. Jal in particular seems to have better deals right now, but you can buy domestic flight passes. And if you're, if you're flying to Hokkaido and Kyushu, it makes a lot of sense because it's so much more expensive to take the train and you know, it's fun to take the Shinkansen a little bit. But why, why would you want to take a seven, a seven hour Shinkansen to Fukuoka? when you can fly there in an hour and a half and have an entire half day. Unless you, you know, it's really what you want to do. The Shinkansen sometimes can be the attraction. Mike De Silva is here. Thank God for Apple Wallet. Yeah. And the other smartphone makers. Low cost, car uh, low cost carriers are also um, doing quite well. Jetstar is back. Uh, if you book in advance, you can get flights for really for as cheap as 50 bucks. All you have to do, I'm telling you guys this, it's not a secret. Number one, don't pack big, super-sized suitcases. I'm, I'm not gonna pick. I'm gonna pick on these people here. Why do you just get a backpack? You're not using most of the stuff inside of there. All right. Bring a laptop, a couple change of clothes, and do the laundry. All right. Second, if you do have a medium-sized suitcase or a large-sized suitcase, at the hotel, all you have to do is takubin it or send it to the next hotel. So take the clothes in a day bag that you need for the next day, and that night or that, uh, like before 6 p.m. or something, take it to uh, the hotel front desk and send it let it travel overnight by the time you get to the hotel the next day there's a 90 percent chance if it's within five hours or less it's going to be there at the hotel lobby for you you didn't even have to carry it on the shinkansen thus reducing your pain it might cost about i don't know 15 bucks a bag to do that or something i mean come on for me this is a no-brainer Nobody wants to be lugging suitcases and having that in front of you to save 15 bucks when you just spent $2,000 to fly halfway around the world to enjoy a vacation in the summer heat and you want to lug a suitcase down and up steps to get from one side to the other. From Tokyo to Kyoto, takubin or send your suitcase to your next hotel. Just do it. Pack lighter, make it, make it so you can put the bag and the overhead luggage without having to get special compartments. There's no reason why the stuff in there honestly unless you're a youtuber you don't need to roll you don't need to roll two bags okay you can just do one bag and that's about it so I think if you're going to uh, if you're going to if you're going to travel around like I don't I don't I've, I've never seen backpackers that had that much luggage that's not backpacking I'm sorry you're not a backpacker you I'm, I'm, I'm a pure classic backpacker. One backpack, one day pack. If, you, if it has wheels, you're not a backpacker. Not that you'd want to be one maybe. Maybe that's the point. But whatever it is, I think that um, one, one medium-sized suitcase and a backpack with your laptop and stuff that you need for the day. That's it. That's all you need. You can buy everything you need buy everything else here if you're big and tall Tokyo's got a bunch of shops for you there's actually a sumo shop that's been catering to sumo wrestlers since 1930 and you can get sizes up to like 10 XL there <laughs> it's pretty crazy there's no excuses anymore even Uniqlo in Ginza has an area with uh, big and tall hi I just joined I have two kids Suica cards. Can I refund those cards since my kids have grown up? Yeah, if you come to Japan, you can get, get your um, 500 yen back. So all the Suica cards have a, uh, a 
500 yen deposit, except for the welcome Suica card, which does not. And uh, you can get that money back when you when you return it to the uh, turnstile, the, the uh, uh, vending machines, which is, I hope people are doing that. But I don't know too many people that actually return the Suica cards. This one guy's got double. He's got double the, double the trouble. That's a small one. I don't know. I don't get what people need so much of. You're going to sweat. You're going to have to do the laundry in the summer. Either sink wash your t-shirts and underwear. Or you could throw them away and buy new ones at Uniqlo. Or Daiso, the 100 yen shop. You make do. This is a Uniqlo dry airism shirt. So it dries really quickly. Yeah, TC writes in, I keep my icy cards plural as souvenirs. Suica is still available for children. Talk to the ticket office. Okay, so I'm not sure yet. I think that they all might be gone. There's just no more chips. They, they probably have a limited amount of certain things. The welcome cards and limited at, at the airport and maybe the kids ones, but they're going to be gone because they're not making new ones right now. The manufacturers are the issue. It's not the train companies. They can't get those chips to manufacture new cards. And because people don't return the cards, there's not enough new ones in there. So what they do is they take the, the chips out, they erase the memory of the chips, and they recycle that into the next card. The exterior of the cards are dirty. They're really easy to, to take apart for them and just put in the new chip with the antenna already inside of it from the maker. Boom, you have it. So they can't, they, they can recycle the chips, but they're not getting enough return because tourists are taking them home. It's cool, I guess. But is it American big and tall? Leonardo, it's sumo big and tall. I think it might be bigger than American big and tall. Just saying. Sumo wrestlers can be up to 210 centimeters or like six foot eight, okay? They can, this, uh, that shop can clothe anybody, I think. Yeah, Appa, Appa Hotel all has washing machines inside. Next to, in the city center, you'll, you'll be able to find uh, coin laundry places. They've increased over the last uh, six months too, since the pandemic ended. Coin laundry is a good business because Japanese homes don't have dryers for the most part. And you can find, um, a lot of them don't have washing machines too. It's just, you know, sometimes it's easier not to have one at your house. If you have an apato, which is a one room apartment, you have to go to the laundromat. So in the center of the city, you'll find these and you know, you're going to have to do a load of laundry in the summer. It's inevitable. Pack lighter, just do laundry. You could do it in the morning when you have jet lag, right? What else are you going to do? Laundry. You can surf your smartphone, go find breakfast. I don't know. Every time I go to Japan to visit family, half my full-size suitcase is omiyagi anyway. That's true. But, you know, you don't need to carry that omiyagi suitcase with you after you've given it away. You can leave it at your first hotel. A lot of the hotels, they might charge you a fee or if you're coming back to that hotel, it's okay. They'll allow you to, let, to save that, leave your bag behind as you travel around. And uh, you could just use your day pack. So you gotta find a way to make this work. But getting on the Shinkansen, the, it's not made for these supersized luggages that over the last 10 years, they've been getting bigger and bigger. And I've seen these really, I, I, I think you could fit them inside there. These really small, like small people, usually girls, that the suitcase is as big as them. And I don't know what they have inside there in summer because you don't need to pack a jacket. I'm, I'm almost tempted to ask, what's inside, miss? May I have a look? But, no. Hotaru Hino, thank you, yeah. It's true, you probably have a lot of gifts. So this is what I do. I bring, inside my suitcase, I bring a duffel bag. You can get them at Walmart in the States. They're about 12 to $20. They zip up within itself and they, they expand. And I put all my clothes and, and non-breakables in that duffel bag and I check that in. And anything I want that's uh, I want to keep, I'll put it into my suit, my hard shell suitcase, which is a medium size. 
and I'm good to go. My clothes aren't, aren't doesn't don't care if they're in a duffel bag. Usually they're quite dirty anyways. Um, and you can put bottles and, and stuff in the middle of the clothes, which softens the blow. If you have a bottle of wine or a bottle of sake, you can put that in the middle there. But the duffel bag has been really good. The fold away duffel bags, they even have little wheels on it that you can wheel the duffel bags with and they fit compactly inside the suitcase pretty well. That's really useful to have. People won't listen to John, let them struggle. <laughs> yeah, let them, I'm, I should make a mock-up of videos and show you the struggle on the Shinkansen platforms. It's not fun. You're destroying your trip a little bit. It, it, it takes the fun out of it, in particular in summer. And wheeling around a suitcase, I don't think it's as much fun someone wheeling the suitcase away. I think it's much better just to have a day pack on your back and be able to put that into a locker or something. It just seems, it seems to make a little more. That's a small wheel suitcase. It's so small, you know, you could probably put it on your back. Oh my gosh. See, I don't know. Like, I think you can, you could do smaller than that. I went to a location shoot to Fukushima. I took one t-shirt. I took two t-shirts, two pairs of underwear, two pairs of socks. After I got home, I washed it when I was taking a shower. I, I rang, rang it out and I hung it up to dry. In the morning, it was dry. I wore the other t-shirt and then I, I always had a new pair. It takes three minutes and the lack of the the ability to uh, move quickly and, and not struggle with all the stuff is really refreshing. All right, let me take you around here because I can show you a little bit more and, and field some questions about the People take too much with them on trips, it's true. But I mean, if you're not used to traveling, you, you think you, you bring stuff that you think you might need if you might need it, don't bring it. If you definitely need it, then bring it. That's that's my policy. Unless you're in a rent-a-car, but if you're getting on public transportation, you don't need it. Stay nimble, stay light. Wear the same thing every day. Black t-shirts, no logos. I don't wear Nike stuff. Sometimes LL Bean. But if they want me to advertise, they should be paying us, right? So I never understood why people wear the big polos logo shirts. It's like, is polo paying you? It's like, I like the little, maybe the little logo, but the ones that are really massive, that the hipsters turn their cow collars up on, which is, you know, style. Yeah, I never understood it. All right, here's Daimaru. Let's take a look at this. This is what they got in the display. Does this chime on the hour or something? Oh, this is an AKB48 thing. I guess it chimes on the hour. Yeah. It's for the photos. Really? I guess hipsters do that. I notice a lot of businessmen. I don't want to, I don't want to tease people. I never turn my collars up. But I notice that a lot of businessmen, when they're on the weekend. Oh, hello. How you we doing? We wanted to meet you. We wanted to meet you. We wanted to get the oh, you... our Shinkansen tickets. And we wanted to get pictures. Oh, don't miss your flight. I know. Oh, we're you're, not you're, missing you're anything. Oh, no. Okay. I think I have some cards here. Oh, yeah, I do. Look at that. Uh, you found oh. me a ticket? Yeah. Okay. <laughs> yeah, man. Yeah. Well I've, done. I've been watching your stream yesterday, I think, or the day before. You met some guy from the UAE. Yeah. Yeah, we've seen that one. Where are you guys from? We're from Kuwait. Kuwait. Okay. Kuwait, yeah. yeah, you said somebody comment from Kuwait. Yeah, uh, I, I, think, I think that was me. Oh, was it you? <laughs> oh, well, thank yeah. you. You guys want to say <laughs> hi? Yes, hi. Hello, hi, everyone. Hello. 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 Hi. I mean, the heat is honestly not that bad right now. It's okay because we're from Kuwait, so we're used to the heat. Like it's, okay. It's 40 Celsius all day, all year long. So yes. Really? This is yeah. fine compared this is fine to, to us. our actual weather. But the humidity, no? I mean, it's not that bad it's today. It's not that bad today, yeah. But I think uh, in 
the middle of August, maybe it will get hotter, so we, we filled up. Oh yeah, you we can tell. We never came to Japan in August, we came in January. January, yeah. January yeah. for yeah. the snow? Yeah, it yes. was snowy and cold. Yeah. You mean it doesn't snow in Kuwait? Uh, no, <laughs> never snow at all. It's in the Middle East, what do you expect? <laughs> no, I wouldn't snow there. We, we actually came this month for the Pokemon World Championship, though, yes. so that's why we went to oh. Yokohama. Yeah. Oh, cool. Are you going to the parade on the 16th? Uh, I think we'll go there. Yeah. Yes. In Yokohama, right? Yes, yes Yokohama. Yokohama. Yeah. Well, take some video for me. I'm not going to be here. So. Really? Oh, you're leaving? I think you're doing the uh, fireworks festival at the, in September. That's right. right. The yeah, Katakai, yeah. the, the uh, monster shell yeah. fireworks. So okay. we get a chance to see them before they launch them yeah. into the air. Yeah. Unfortunately, oh. we won't be there. Ah. Oh my god, you can have fun. Oh, you can. Well, so, I'll, I'll try to live stream and bring everybody with us. Can, can we take, can we take Oh, yeah, yeah, please. please. Say hi. Hello. 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 One more? One more. Okay. Can I take you? Oh, yeah, sure. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. You're welcome. Have a good trip, guys. Thank you. That was nice. From Kuwait, where it's so hot. Yes, they have not. It has not been that humid yet. It's it's going to get humid really soon, oppressively so. Whoa! The I guess they're almost sold out. That's why. So I got my Daimyo supporters. Just a shout out. Um, right here, there is a shop. This might be the most delicious uh, confection. They're like these uh, nuts from Kamakura this super delicious confection. So I, I, I have reopened this up. So if you want to support on Patreon, we have these uh, packages that I send every month with regional goodies. Next month, it's either gonna be from Kagoshima or Nara, because I'm going there this weekend. So uh, yeah, if you support, I will send that, a, a box to you, uh, EMS, because that's the only thing available to the US right now. And um, yeah, I'm, it's gonna be a lot of fun. This month's postcard is going to be uh, from Nara. So if you're in the in, on the Patreon Postcard Club, you're gonna get a really special postcard from Nara, I believe, or the Soma Noma Oi um, Samurai Festival. I've got two postcards, so one or the other. They're both really good images I have from from both those festivals. The Nara one I haven't taken yet. All right. So did I miss anything? Ah, Aiken is here. Have you seen the big one to six scale figure boxes? Uh, have you seen how big one to six scale figure boxes are? I have not. And Arthur Vandele is here. Thank you, Arthur. I have not. All I know is when it comes to the things that are scaled, I buy Leo Tomikar, Tomika, and uh, he has the whole Japanese collection, almost. I can't, I can't stop buying Tomika. They're so cute. And on Amazon, they're like 350 yen, which is $2.80 each. And like miniature Japanese buses or miniature Shinkansens or miniature uh, Japanese postal boxes or miniature taxis for $2.50. You can get Amazon sent to your hotel, by the way. So if you don't want to go out and do shopping, you can just go to uh, amazon.co.jp and send it to your hotel. Usually it, it arrives in 24 hours or less, which is crazy. Guide CC uh, from Thailand, awesome. Thank you for e every of your videos. We have been watching your videos for a long time. We are from Thailand and I love fresh coconut. Yes, please buy Leo another fresh coconut. You got it, you're spoiling him. Oh my gosh, it's so exciting. All right, cool, I'm gonna get him another coconut tonight and this is gonna make his day. He never gets it two days in a row. Let, let me tell you how much a coconut is in Japan. From the supermarket, the coconuts come from Vietnam um, I believe they're organic, and uh, I'm not sure what that means. I, I thought all coconuts were organic, but they um, are 400 yen. So that's about $3.20, which is pretty expensive, but I mean, it's coming all the way from Vietnam, so it's, it's worth it. I appreciate that very much. I love coconuts. I like to, to, to dig in and get all the meat out of it and we, we drink the water. Maybe I'll get two, one for Kanai and one for Leo and me to share. Uh, Intel 488 writes in here, just returned from Japan and I'm already planning my trip for next year. That sounds like you had a pretty good trip. Never 
over the last few months, and I'm gonna do another uh, live stream on this, over the last few months, you know, entrepreneurs in Japan have been making new experiences for tourists. And it's really, really a new, it's new. Because I think that there were tourist attractions like theme parks and places to go, but there weren't too many attractions that allowed you to experience something. Maybe the robot restaurant, by the way, that's not returning. The robot restaurant is done. There was like a rumor that they were coming back. All of the news agencies picked up on it, but I got word that they're they're done. No robot restaurant. Tor Toropoco is here and he has one word in three syllables. Coconut. So basically I'm getting my own coconut. Three coconuts coming right up. It was really hard. The coconuts come, the, the green part of the coconuts have been uh, cut off. So they're cut into just the white around it for easy transport. But you need to take a knife and husk the top of it to get to the hard part. Then you take, you see it like a, like a um, flex capacitor, this uh, symbol with a line and then a flex capacitor on the, on the coconut. So you, you, on one of the lines at the bottom, you take the butt of the knife and you and you boom, 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 and it and it'll automatically open the top of it without having to like take a saw and cut it open. But if you just take the heel of the knife, it'll uh, break open around the edges, and then you can just put the put it in there. I saw a guy do it in, in Thailand of all places, because I whenever we go to Thailand, we end up drinking coconuts like every day whenever they're available because we just don't have them here in Japan until recently. Started to see them at at the convenient at the uh, supermarkets with all the other fruits and vegetables. Coconuts are one of the fruits. Is it a vegetable? Or is it a nut? Interesting. It's coconut. I don't know. All right, I'll take one last question before John's got to get back and, and uh, work on the uh, a video on the Tokyo fire bombing, which I hope to release ASAP. For those that are just tuning in here, one last time, the Sika cards are no longer being sold because they've been suspended indefinitely. Pasmo, which is the Metro version of it, was, we weren't sure about that, but they just released a press release this morning, which we knew was coming on uh, uh, stating that no longer we're going to be doing uh, sell selling these. They're suspended indefinitely because of the chip shortage. And there's a chip inside of there. You can see they don't have that chip. There's an antenna on the inside, which uh, you, you works with the NFC readers with all the money and everything that's, that's stored on there. So it's kind of a shame, but you can do it on your smartphone or you can talk to me and maybe I'll, I'll give you one of my, one of my 20 cards I have. Sometimes they stop working. I have a, a Ikoka card where the IC chip is broken and it no longer charges. So you can break those IC chips if you try to bend it. Don't try to bend your IC cards, all right? You could break them. Can you reload a Passmo card that you already have? Yes. Up to 10 years, the money will stay on there. But again, if you break the IC chip or if it's damaged, you're gonna lose the money. Probably. I don't think there's a... Maybe the, with the card number and your account, you might be able to get refunded. If you close the account, I don't know. But don't damage the card. Some whiskeys... In, okay, here we go. Jason, thank you for, for that. The Patreon postcards will go out around the 10th of this month this year. And they're going to be of Nara or the Samurai Festival I was just at. Probably Nara. I don't know. We'll see. But both the images are so darn good. Pacer writes in here, the iPhone 8 or newer can do the uh, um, IC cards through the wallet on the iPhone. So that's good information. I have a 7, so I, I need the app. Actually, this is the 14 Pro. I gave Kanai my 12 Pro. My 13 Pro never arrived. This is another story. All right, last thing. I right, come on over here. So we're still short on people. And our friends from Kuwait, I guess I wish I'd asked them for, the, for their names. 
Um, we still need about three more people or I might not be able to hold this event. We don't have enough people to uh, get there yet. So we haven't charged anybody. We have eight people signed up. We need to have a minimum of, of 10 or 11. So if, if you're in Japan in September, I highly recommend, this is the QR code. Let me see if I can make this larger. Scan this if you're watching this on your TV. Just, you can, you can get a look uh, at the information anyways, it's interesting. They put together all the, the itinerary for this trip we're doing. It's gonna be really awesome. Um, again, we, I'm meeting you if, you if you're in Tokyo. You can meet me here at around 8 a.m. If you sign up for the trip, the exact time of the meetup from Tokyo will be on that, on that itinerary. But we're all taking the same Shinkansen train and we're gonna be leaving at around eight o'clock and we get to the bus in Nagoka at, at uh, 10.05 and we start a bus trip. It's just us. It's kind of fun. I will be on the speaker. <laughs> we're gonna have, we're gonna be traveling around. We have uh, uh, VIP seats, special seating. I think they're VIP. Special seating at the Katakai Festival, which is pretty darn awesome. And then we also have uh, a hotel reservation at a really nice country inn. Um, this is the high season, so a lot of there aren't a lot of options in the area. So unless you stay in Nagoka but we wanted to stay out in the countryside. So we got really nice rooms. Um, I believe single travelers are okay. There's a certain amount, but single travelers are, are cool. We can accommodate families and uh, couples. So we have different types of rooms. We've, we have a, 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 a save on the hotel right now. And um, that gets released if we can't get enough people. So I hope that we can get three more people to sign up for this. Uh, we have lunch at an Obachan, like an old ladies restaurant where it's family run. I kind of want to support local businesses with this trip. Um, I personally do not make any money off of this. This is the first time we're doing it. So it's all an experiment to see if we can do more bus trips because I put my money where I'm sorry. I put my mouth where my mouth is. What? <laughs> I put my mouth. I, I tell everybody to go to the countryside. So that's what I want. I want everybody to go to the countryside. So these bus trips are, are a way for me to do that. And fireworks festivals, I think are one of the best ways to see the countryside. So will you join me, please? We just, I, like, okay, there you go. We just need a couple more signups and we're good. Until we get that, we're kind of not sure. And I believe the deadline is August 12th. So we have about 11 days to get there, but slightly worried. Slightly worried. Steve, I think Steven is going to sign up. We're not sure yet, but Steven had some questions um, about accessibility. So we are able to have uh, accessibility points during the fireworks festival. We can use their uh, um, their special center to, as a restroom. So we have maybe a little bit better facilities. It's a 10 minute walk from the, from the area. So it'll probably take a little bit more than 10 minutes during the crowded times later on but we do have access for uh, people with special needs. Um, if you need, if you are thinking about coming in a wheelchair, uh, please do let us know and we'll try everything we can for accessibility. Uh, because it's a countryside and this is the first time we're doing it, it's, we're not set up well enough yet to maybe take everybody that wants to go, but we'll be really transparent and honest with you to, to let you know if, um, we can accommodate you, just let us know. So far we've been able to accommodate everybody, so the eight people who signed up. So, yeah. John, you're aging backwards. It's because I, I got, my, my face is gonna turn into a catcher's mitt because I got so much sun the day before yesterday. I wanna tell you something, I almost passed out yesterday's live stream. And the reason why, I think it was heat exhaustion and dehydration. I was just so hot and so worn out and so dehydrated from the two days of working in the sun. It was like this, blue skies, 38 degrees out there. I changed my t-shirt several times. I almost passed out. I still didn't get enough water maybe. Um, I was live streaming and there was a time where I went silent. I feel like a politician in the US. Everybody's is a little bit older now, but I, I just blanked out like that. I think it was just too bright as well. I need to wear sunglasses. So you have to take care of yourself in this heat. Please uh, make sure you drink enough water. 
Tokyo's got free water points. There's a uh, an app called My Mizu that will tell you where there are free water points. You don't have to buy the plastic pet bottles. It's good for the environment and uh, it's good for the pocketbook. Save your money for, I don't know, cocktail later or something, I don't know. Speaking of cocktails. I bought, I bought Peter a beer up here at Hitachi no. Right, if, if, you're, if you've got 30 minutes before your Shinkansen, you can sit at this, stand at this table right here and you can drink a craft beer from uh, Hitachi, uh, Hitachi no beer. And they had a yuzu uh, pale ale, which is so good. Yuzu is a citrus fruit from uh, Kochi Prefecture and Kyushu. Just up the steps here. I like Hitachi, you know, they, they make pretty good. They're one of the original uh, craft beer breweries here. And I, I drink beer maybe once or twice a month now. And that was one, that was the one time in July I got a chance to drink a beer right up there. I had a, a beer twice last, uh, last month. One the day before yesterday at the end of the shoot and one with Peter up here. That's why I'm aging better. I gave up alcohol. Next up is coffee. I stopped drinking uh, uh, alcohol and I feel better. I stopped eating, I, I eat a, a fraction of the rice. I don't eat any bread or bakery items anymore. I feel better. Maybe that's why. I lost my third chin. <laughs> I, I, you can see my six pack, it's small. But if, if, I, if I flex it, it, I can see something. There's something there. All right, Kevin Riley is here, but I can't pull him in because I'm not using, it's too late, Kev. But Kevin, if you send me a video, I might be able to download it and then uh, upload the video onto the live stream. Kevin is in Osaka. I wanted him to make a video and send it to me so we could see the uh, situation in Osaka. But apparently, yeah, Suica car, uh, Ikoka cards are also not all there. Kevin, he, he sent me a message on Line. I almost never use Line, by the way. So if you're, if you meet me like, let's exchange Line, my answer is no. I don't want any more apps. If you want to get in touch with me, you can uh, find me. Or, or Patreon works. Because then you're like supporting the show and you're part of the community. And if, if you can only make time for a certain group of people, probably those on Patreon and uh, members here on YouTube. Because I mean, like, like, I don't know. I don't have a lot of time and 24 hours goes by so fast these days. Line is so convenient. I don't have WhatsApp, by the way. I don't use it. I, I hardly use Line and it's only on one phone and, and uh, I'm not even sure. Well, I guess I'm logged in because Kevin just messaged me. Kanai sends me my stuff through Line. Is the Manaka safe? Yes. Manaka is one of the 12. Let me see if I, I can pull up a picture. I, I want you guys to understand it here. Here are the various cards. This, not, this is probably not all of them either. There's the Pitaka, the Ikoka, the Kitaka, the Suika, the Pasmo, the Toika, which I believe is also Nagoya area. The Ninoka, a Manaka, which is central Japan. The Sugoka, which is one of my favorites, that's in Kagoshima. The Hayaken, which is Fukuoka, and the Nimoka. I think Nimoka is also Kansai. And the regions are divided up, and it doesn't matter. The money is going onto the same card, which is on the same system. So you can use a, a Hokkaido card in Kyushu, and vice versa. And they're all, this, all safe. If you can find one in Kagoshima, get the Sugoka. It's kind of cool. Actually, I think I, I have my Sugoka here. Yeah. Oh no, I have the uh, the Hayaka Ken. Sorry, the Hayaka Ken. Yeah, right here. This is the Fukuoka card. I think the F is for Fukuoka, right there. I've been using that, and I have a Pasmo as well, and a Suika, and a Kitaka. You could refill it. We don't say refill, we say to charge. So at the vending machines, you can charge the cards. Sean, thank you. 
I, there's no vending machine around here, but as soon as this is done, I might, I might recharge up there at the Hitachi No. So I'll, I'll show this again quickly. And you can see here, you can recharge the phones on the thing. You, you, there's a place where you could, you could put your IC cards into the machine or lay it in a recharger where through like infrared or lasers or something, it'll put money onto the card. So you can recharge it through the machines. You can also recharge it apparently at convenience stores, which is convenient. So if you want to do that there, you have enough to get a taxi. I use taxis all the time because this is my backyard. I live um, in this direction. I'm not going to tell you exactly where. And Chuoku is my, my neighborhood. So yeah, I use taxis often because it's, it saves time and it's as cheap as a subway. When you look at the, the uh, economics of the time saved, taxis start at 400 yen. And for me to get to my house, it's usually under like $6, six or $7 for the taxi. So whenever I come home from the Shinkansen, I grab a taxi. And on peak times, just inside information, all right? That's the taxi stand. Usually there's a queue of people that's so long. And sometimes the taxi line is so long and there's not a lot of taxis, you can wait there for 30 minutes. So what I do, I keep walking, I cross the street and I pick up a taxi on the corner there. I've never waited more than three minutes. And I usually save 100 yen because it's, I, I don't wait for this light, so it's a little bit closer. <laughs> Look at all the taxis that don't go into the taxi place at Tokyo Station. All these taxis miss it. So it pays to just walk across the street from the station and, and get a priority. I live in Tokyo. I know stuff. Did you for a long time. All right, everybody. Thanks for watching. This is a little bit longer than I wanted to do it. But if you have any questions, you can leave it in the comments below. I do check it in the first couple of hours. Uh, if you're in Tokyo on September 10th and 11th and you have nothing to do, spend some time with me and some awesome other awesome viewers from only in japan and help us get this pro bus tour going because i want to do this again information is here we're gonna go see this fireworks guys look at this see that that's the yon shakodama it's the largest fireworks shell that's continuously fired every year in the world that's honda san he's my friend He's the creator of the Yon Shakodama. We're gonna get a chance to meet with him. You're gonna get a chance to talk to him. This is inside baseball. This is the Yon Shakodama being lowered into the shell. This is where we're going on September 10th and 11th. We're gonna see this one explode, I believe. Look at the size difference. That's a Ni Shakodama. You don't even see this in Tokyo, that small one. This, that small one is 10 times bigger than the sizes that are shot up in Tokyo. And then I want you to look at the Yon Shakodama. It's off the charts ridiculous. You're gonna see that if you come with us. Or if you, if you don't, you could probably do it on your own, but you're gonna be way more comfortable on our air conditioned bus, okay? Well, so what do we do for transportation? I miss that. Do we have to buy individual tickets? Are you talking about the Suica card? Uh, yeah, for the Suica card, you need to buy, you need to buy, you can use your iPhone or your Google card, your Google phone, and you can install the money there, or you could just buy tickets. And I still buy tickets because I need a, a Yoshi show or a business receipt whenever I travel for only in Japan. I get a receipt. It's not a big deal to have the tickets. In fact, I prefer it. Um, I'm not, like, I don't know, I'm not used to having but for local train travel, I use the, the uh, Suica card. But for Shinkansen, I still use physical tickets. But, you know, use your phone now. If you have a new, newer smartphone, you can use that. All right, I think I answered the question several times. If you're still watching, Jason, you're awesome. I miss you guys. Shout out to Carrie. There's Johnny. I see you guys there. You can type in where you're always at the end of the live stream. You can type in if you've never commented, you're just watching. Just leave where you're from, where you're watching from. It's always neat to see. We have every single continent represented from every single part of the world, which is just awesome. 
Hold on a second, wait. There's one comment which had it wrong here. RIP Android users, no app for us. Completely wrong. You have um, Suica for iOS and you have Pasmo for Google and Google Android phones. Just use Pasmo, it doesn't matter. Suica is just a brand that's the exact same thing as Pasmo. And that QR code is to our uh, bus trip to uh, the biggest fireworks festival, biggest fireworks shell festival in Japan. I hope you guys can join me. Watching from America, Sydney. Who else is here? I know Brazil is here, Melbourne, California, Brisbane. Look at this, Philly. Oh, Arizona. Western Australia, Antarctica, probably. Seattle, Los Angeles, UK, awesome, Florida. Oh man, I love this to see see where you guys are all from now. Taiwan, Singapore, San Jose. Look at this, Florida. We got such an amazing audience. Alberta, Norway, Singapore, Vegas, baby, Mexico, Alabama. I'd say Roll Tide, but I'm from Ohio State. But I like the camaraderie. That's cool. Look at it as a fruit. Yes, Hong Kong, Sydney. Thanks, guys. See you next. See you tomorrow. Tokyo, Miami, California, Jakarta, wow!